looks very nice. Don't you think it looks lovely, Gerald? Look, Dad, if you really object to this, we can turn right round. <laughs> you can come with us, Grandad. We've already had this discussion, Matthew. We can always look around for something else. Look, it, it's, it's not the hotel, Joyce. It's the philosophy that offends. What philosophy? I'm not to be trusted on my own. I mean, one little mistake. One nearly fatal mistake. And that brands me as a menace to society, does it? Oh, you're certainly behaving like a menace now. The face like that, you'll terrify those nice old ladies. Like the nice old ladies. Won't you brighten up their Christmas? Now, shut up, Stephen. Help me get your granddad's stuff out of the car. Goodbye, Gerald. Goodbye, Joyce. I'm sure you'll have a marvellous time. <sighs> Not if he's got anything to do with it. Well, I think this is very nice. Say goodbye to your granddad and wait downstairs, boys. At least it's a decent bed. Mm. You want to be coming with us? And what would I do on skis? Fall over a lot. Precisely. You mind you don't break anything. Oh, we've got Mum and Dad well insured. Oh, big enough bathroom, isn't it? Even got a shower cap, at least. I think it's a shower cap. Soap. Nice thick towels. Oh. Well, that is handy. A little sewing kit and something to polish your shoes with. Look. Oh, wonderful. I can't wait to sit in the bath sewing my socks, shining my shoes and wearing my shower cap. Dad, we really want you to enjoy this. We couldn't leave you alone, not after what happened. It was an isolated incident. Yes, well, there's no point in going over old ground. Absolutely. Well, I'll see you in two weeks, then. Don't be surprised if I'm still sitting here. Then you'd be a damn fool. Places like this are bloody nice. Places like this are the equivalent of a kennel. When you go on holiday, pets go into kennels and elderly relatives go into places like this. You could have a very pleasant two weeks here if you weren't so determined to be miserable. I do not enjoy being surrounded by old people. Mr. Carmody, I'm Miss Claystow, resident physiotherapist and general dog's body, and I always make it a point of greeting our guests and explaining the room. Oh, really? Have your guests so little experience of rooms? What is their natural habitat? The Serengeti, the Arctic tundra? My father's a little unhappy at being dumped, at least. That's how he sees it. That's exactly how it is, Arthur. I don't mind accepting that fact, but I do object to your dressing it up as a little treat for the old man. Oh, Christ. Um, you'll see there are a number of push buttons here by the bed. There is a fairly clear guide as to what they all do, but some of our residents find it a little daunting at first. You can actually turn off the TV and the lights without ever getting out of bed. And if there's a problem in the night, or indeed during the day, there is a fully trained nurse on duty round the clock. This red button here will bring her to your bedside immediately. Oh, I'm throbbing with excitement already. Here's a real treat. Something you approve of at last. <sighs> Rubber undersheets. I really don't think that's necessary in my father's case. Well, of course, we can easily remove them. I wouldn't dream of it. After 70 years of self-imposed discipline, I can let my bladder run riot. So, is he going to settle in? Just drive. Almost finished. Likes and dislikes. I like privacy and I dislike personal questions. I was talking about food. Some of our guests are on medication and have to be careful of their diet. I don't like sloppy boiled eggs. Anything else? Porridge. I hate porridge. <laughs> what else do you hate? 
I've told you porridge and sloppy boiled eggs. All right. Is there anything you will eat but would rather not? Lots of things. Such as? Well, I can't tell you that now. Loads of things. Well, what springs immediately to mind? I don't know. Anything. All right, then dog shit. Sorry? I'd rather not eat dog shit, but if somebody gave me a million pounds, then I probably would. Very well. I'll leave you to get your bearings. Thank you. Mr. Carmody, this is not a prison. And though you may not believe it, we actually have guests who keep coming back, year after year. Tea is served in the main lounge at four o'clock. Pork. I beg your pardon? I've suddenly remembered. Uh, I will eat pork, but I'd prefer not to. I'll make a note of it. Do that. Where's the town? You mean the shopping centre. Is the shopping centre in the town? Well, there is a shopping centre in town, but it's not as near as the one off Downing Road. Are you driving? Walking. Oh, well, in that case, you'd best go to the one off Downing Road. Look, let, 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 let's start again, shall we? I mean, the front, the seafront, is that anywhere near Downing Road? Oh, no, no. That's at the bottom of the town. But it's nowhere near the shopping centre. How far? What? The seafront. A mile and a half. It's not so bad going down because it's downhill, but coming up is uphill, so you'd best get a taxi. Oh, yes, I will. They said it was going to rain this afternoon. Oh, dear me. And I left my shark hat in the bathroom. Where to? I'm looking for an hotel. Oh, yeah, what sort of price? No, I, I, I don't need an hotel. I have an hotel. I just seem to have mislaid it. Well, what's the name of it? What's it called? I don't know. What, you mean you've forgotten? I doubt I ever knew it. I wasn't paying particular attention when I arrived. And you don't know where you're staying? No. Oh, this is the first. This is. Can you give me a clue? It's a large, imposing building overlooking the sea. Well, there's about 15 like that in this place. Well, it has a large garden. Mm, well, they've all got large gardens. Look, just drive around, will you? I'll, I'll know it when I see it. Did you bring your room key? No. 
Well, have you got a receipt? No, nothing. Nothing. Is that no receipt, nothing, or no money, nothing? I left my wallet for safety in my room. How much money have you got? Oh, some loose change. Look, just find the hotel, will you? you? You'll be paid in full. Now, don't look at me like that. I'm completely trustworthy. So, are you from London? No, uh, Bristol. Yeah, I'm a Londoner. Oh, really? Yeah, my parents brought me down here when I was 13. I had weak lungs. Well, they thought the sea air would improve them. Seems to have worked. Well, of course, the place looks quite different at night. Yeah, don't we all? Well, you stay here. Oh, no, I don't think so. After all, you forgot the name of the hotel, didn't you? I told you, I forgot to make a note of the name of the place when I went for a walk. Well, the same distance. Who's to say that you won't forget that you owe me 12 pounds on the clock? Don't be impertinent. My key, please. Yes, of course, Mr Carmody. Can you remember your room number? Yeah, you'll be lucky. Oh, here it is. Number 316. Uh, 316. You got that? Young lady, I'm going to my room and I shall be returning almost immediately. If this man makes any attempt to follow me, I'll be very grateful if you will take steps to have him removed from the hotel. Is that understood? Hey! Hang on a minute. <laughs> you know, I've really got to hand it to you. You've got some nerve. Yes, and limited patience. Look, I'm the one who had to have the patience. Or driving you round all afternoon because you didn't know where you were staying. You didn't happen to play rugby as a boy, did you? Rugby, sorry. Oh, not important. I seem to have dropped my book. Oh, uh, uh, allow me. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Once again, my, my profuse apologies. No great harm done. Just took me by surprise, that's all. American football, perhaps? <laughs> and perhaps not. I thought I'd save you the trouble of coming back down. And the woman at the desk said not to worry. Well, it happens all the time, guests forgetting where they're living. But all these hotels look the same. Well, you know that. After all, you saw enough of them this afternoon, didn't you? Oh. 20, I've got change in the taxi. It's not necessary. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh. Look, if I was out of line back there, I apologise. Well, after all, we're all going to grow old one day. Yes, one day we undoubtedly will. Mr Carmody, reception told me about your afternoon. I hope it wasn't too upsetting. Well, I'll be off then. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, um... What's that? Oh, my card, in case you need a taxi. And my name's Derek. Mm. 
And uh, what's the name of this hotel again? Look, just go away, will you? The Tregenna Castle Hotel. 316. I'm afraid you've missed your dinner. Perhaps you'd like some sandwiches. Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. I'm, I'm feeling a little groggy. Oh. Well, in that case, I'll leave it to rest. What kind of sandwiches? Ham, roast beef, cheese. Could, could you do roast beef with horseradish sauce? I think we could manage that. I'm not hungry, you understand, but uh, I might get peckish later on. Of course. And, um, Miss... I'm, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. Miss Glaister. Miss Glaister, I... I'd be very grateful if nothing was said about my little jaunt this afternoon. Oh, you don't have to worry. Our staff are very discreet. Well, given the age of your guests, there's not much to be discreet about. I think you'd be surprised. What does that mean? As I've said, Mr. Carmody, we're very discreet.
this way, Mr. Carmody. This is table four, and I think you'll find it very pleasant. <laughs> this is Miss Dean. How do you do? Mrs. Carmichael. Good morning. Mr. Prager. Welcome. The vacant chair belongs to Mrs. Palmer, who I'm sure will be joining you shortly. Table four, this is Mr. Carmody. Good morning. Oh, before I go, I would just like to mention my lecture programme again. If any of you would like to give a little talk about your life or your work, there are a few evening slots available next week. I'm down already to talk about patchwork quilts. That's Tuesday, isn't it? Yes, Tuesday. It's really male speakers we're short of. What about you, Mr Prager? You couldn't print my experiences, let alone speak about them. I really meant work experience. Those you wouldn't be interested in. Oh, I'm sure you're just being modest. For 40 years, I was the biggest manufacturer of elastic in the East End. Well, that's fascinating. What elastic keeps up may be fascinating, but the stuff itself is dull. It stretches, it shrinks. What more is there to say? Oh, what about you, Mr. Carmody? Oh, no, out of the question, I'm sorry. Well, do give it some thought, won't you? Enjoy your breakfast. Excuse me, oh, ma'am. Awfully sorry. Thank you so much. Will you be with us for Christmas, Mr. Carmody? I sincerely hope not. <laughs> oh, but it's very nice here, especially at Christmas. Yes, I'm sure. Don't have the bacon. I beg your pardon. Better you should chew my elastic. Mr. Prager's from Yugoslavia. And you are from? Bristol. But before that, what part of Europe? Godalming. Miss Dean's from Shrewsbury, and I'm from Milford Haven. Oh, indeed. I'm not Welsh, but my husband was in the fleet air arm and we were stationed there. Fell in love with the district, so naturally when he retired, we moved back. Mm. And what did you do, Mr... Oh, I'm so sorry. What was your name again? Carmody. I knew a Lester Carmody when we lived outside Penrith. It's an unusual name. What would you like, sir? Solitude and peace. Sorry? Um, tea and toast will do nicely, thank you. I was saying, it's an unusual name. The time. Know your name. A quarter to nine. No, no. We were talking about your name, Mr. Carmody. Well, it must be. I wound it up before I came down. We were discussing your name. Sorry? Your name? Mrs. Carmichael was saying, what an unusual name you have. I I'm afraid it's clogged up again. What is? Well, I have this recurring ailment, um, intermittent wax. What kind of wax? They've tried syringing it, but nothing gets through. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Look, you, you won't think it rude if I read my newspaper, will you? Then, then you can forget all about me. Well, if you don't mind being left out of the conversation. Yes, the Daily Telegraph. I, I've taken it all my life. I always find the obituaries so comforting, don't you think? They're the first thing I read in bed in the morning. If I'm not in, I get up. Poor fellow. Yes. Yeah? I'm sorry, sir. I left it as long as I could. Oh, you want to do the room? I won't be five minutes. Uh, could, could, could you take off the rubber under sheets? They make the bed smell like a gymnasium. Yes, sir.
I have to lock up now, sir. Sir. What? Uh, 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 yes, of course. few minutes more. No hurry, no hurry. I think a walk. The yeah, air will do me good. Good morning. Are you all right? We, we bumped into each other last night. Oh, the rugby player. No, I'm fine, thank you. This is really very clumsy of me. Not at all. No, I, I think we're neighbours, you know. We are? Yeah, let me, let me see. There we are. 316. 317. That's well, that makes sense. <laughs> well, I, I won't disturb you anymore. <laughs> it's all right. Just one other thing. That music you were playing last night. When? Last night. Well, this morning, actually. Oh, I hope I didn't disturb you. Oh, no, no. No, no, not at all. Not at all. I'm, I sometimes have trouble sleeping, and music helps. Yes, I, I know just what you mean. I, I always find sleeping difficult first night in a strange bed. <laughs> it, it was a violin I heard. About two in the morning. Two in the morning? Oh, how selfish of me. No, no, no. It was... Oh. I mean, the music was strangely comforting. The piece you heard was The Lark Ascending by Vaughan Williams. Uh, I play it a lot. Vaughan Williams. Do you know his music? No, but I saw him conduct once. Oh. Vaughan Williams. Oh, really? Yes, a big man. <laughs> he wore a crumpled suit. <laughs> I mean, the real conductor was in the full dicky, of course, but Vaughan Williams came out of the audience looking remarkably old. <laughs> My God, that's odd. What is? It just occurred to me. That ancient, ancient man was probably younger than I am now. <laughs> well, I must get on with my walk and let you get back to your book. Uh, the lock what? Ascending. Well, good morning. Good morning. Sir? Yeah? I've checked in the storeroom. Um, oh, we don't do these, I'm afraid. You best try where you bought it. Well, I bought it years ago. How can I be expected to remember that far back? The new ones are just as good, and they're very cheap. You just chuck them away when they're finished. I don't want a new one. I'm attached to this one. It knows its way around the telegraph crossword better than I do. Well, I don't want this either. Oh, Mr. Carmody. How's the wax? situation. Sorry? The wax in your ear. Has it settled down yet? The weather. No, no, not the weather. The wax. Yes, I, I went for a walk, but luckily the rain held off. Oh, good, good. Oh, here comes Mr. Prager, an office member. You won't have met Mrs. Palmer. She wasn't at breakfast this morning. This is Mr. Carmody. He has trouble with his hearing. Does he really? He has earwax that comes and goes. Conversation is out of the question, but he's really quite pleasant. Mr. Carmody, this is Mrs. Palmer. I've written it down. This is Mrs. Palmer. And now our little party is complete. This must have happened very suddenly. It did. 
Mrs. Carmichael was talking to him at breakfast and it suddenly went. Really? He seems to have trouble with his eyesight as well. But perhaps someone should order for him. Oh, I'm sure he can manage. You don't want anyone to order for you, do you, Mr. Carmody? You can manage, can't you? Um... Mrs. Palmer is asking if you wish someone to order for you. There is no need to shout. <laughs> My condition is not too bad at the moment. Ah, so the vex has waned. I'm so sorry. It must be dreadful to be deaf, particularly when you're so fond of music. Is he fond of music? Are you fond of music, Mr. Carmody? Moosley? No, 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 I'm not particularly fond of Moosley. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Palmer. <laughs> Actually, I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, I've lost my appetite. Will you excuse me? Really, Mrs. Palmer, a fellow human being's affliction is hardly a call for mirth. It's nervous laughter. Please excuse me. Forgive me for saying so, Mrs. Palmer. But you really didn't make things very easy for me, you know. Easy for you? Don't be ridiculous. What? Well, I was the one that got told off for giggling. And what a pathetic excuse for ignoring everyone. Well, it was a spur of the moment thing. I mean, that Mrs. What's her neighbor never stopped talking. I'm afraid I'm not very good in the mornings. Neither am I. Yes, I, I really don't quite know what to do about it, this deafness thing. It's becoming a bit of an embarrassment. I should have a miraculous recovery if I were you. Otherwise, we'll all have headaches from shouting at each other. Good book. A guide to the myths and legends of the area. My faithful companion. You're down here alone, are you? Yeah. Your husband not with you. Oh, my husband's been dead for many years. Well, so is mine. Well, my wife, I mean. Well, not, not my husband. Naturally enough. <laughs> well, was that your husband in the picture? What? The photograph in your room. You were in my room? Well, I mean, they were cleaning our rooms, and so, so I stepped outside for a minute, and absentmindedly stepped into yours. It, it, it was only for a second or so. Oh. No. Sorry. The picture was not of my husband. Interesting machine you have. We're with the tapes. Oh, my ghetto blaster. Huh? Well, that's, that's what my nephew calls it. Music means a lot to you. Yeah. I played and taught piano for years. Really? Yes, my wife played the piano. Very badly. Oh, I'm sure she didn't. Oh, she did, but with great gusto. We used to keep the piano in the box room, and she'd go on in, she'd shut the door, and she'd bang away. <laughs> it was exactly the right sound level. It muffled all the wrong notes, but the gist of the thing got through. And you like a good tune, don't you? Ah, yes. Give me something you could whistle. <laughs> Do you do a lot of whistling? Well, not out loud. Mentally. And how did you make your millions, Mr. Carmody? I didn't make millions. No, you look very prosperous. Well, I didn't do badly. At what? Stockbroking. Oh, so you're a stockbroker. I would never have guessed. Are you laughing at me again? No, I wouldn't dream of it. Mr. Carmody! Feeling better? Oh, my, my, much better, thank you. Oh, I'm so pleased. You can both be on my team. What? We're playing Give Us a Clue. But Mrs. Palmer is reading. 
Oh, not important. Well, it's been on the notice board all week. Main lounge, 4.30, give us a clue. And I'm team captain. Mm. How are you now, Mr. Carmody? They're both going to be on our team. Oh, I hear you're going to be on our team. He can hear you now, mm. Miss Dean. I'm, I'm, I'm really quite hopeless at this sort of thing, you know. Now, no false modesty, Mr. Carmody. You're going to be a great asset. All that miming you have to do when you're deaf. <laughs> It's really very easy. You must have seen the television programme. Uh, this is a book. Uh, this is a film. A play. A television show. <laughs> and then we break it down into words and then into syllables. Uh, this is words and this is syllables. I, I really can't do this. It's just Gerard's under another name. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm, I, I'm no good at making a fool of myself. Oh, I'm sure you'll manage beautifully. Very good. Well done. <laughs> now, I think we'll give this one to... Mr. Carmody. Look, um, I, I really can't do this. Oh, we'll have a go. Or I'll tell Table 4 what a fake you really are. Now, don't hurry it, Mr. Comedy. We're only three points by, and there's still time to catch up. Ready? I, I, I really do wish somebody else would do this. Two minutes for your team to get it, and I'm starting the clock now. Come on. Come on, Mr. Comedy. Don't just stand there. Is it a play, a book, or a film? A film! Gee, gee. Half a point off for talking. No. No talking, Mr. Carmody. If it's a film, it's this. Oh, it's a film. Oh, film. How many words? Four. Four, Four words. Now, first word. How many syllables? One. Wow. I'll have to penalise you again if you persist in talking. Can you mind it? Can you mind the first word? Does it sound like anything? Uh, um, uh, does it rhyme with anything? Well, it must sound like something. One minute gone. Well, don't just stand there. Do something. The second word. The second word. Second word. Well, the next word. Any word. Fourth word. Do you mean the fourth, fourth word? word? Fourth word. No. Glass blowers. Thirty seconds left. Uh, um, um, hair dryer. Trees. Bend. Keep fit. <laughs> Breathless. Blowing, blowing. Ten seconds left. Wind. <laughs> Fourth word. Wind. <laughs> Gone with the wind. Yes. Just crept in under the bar. That's five points, minus half a point for talking, makes Mrs Carmichael's team one and a half points ahead. Now it's Mrs Wilkinson. <sighs> well done, you two. <laughs> well guessed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be very careful, Mr Carmody. Why? Well, you might start to enjoy this kind of thing. Mr. Carmody's mime clinched the contest. <laughs> oh, I was just telling Mr. Brager about Give Us a Clue. Oh, Chef Luke. <laughs> <laughs> no sign yet of Mrs. Palmer. Obviously not joining us this evening. You spoke to her? She would be here by now. Was she all right? I've not seen her. Has anyone checked? Checked? Yes, phoned her room or anything. I mean, she might be ill or something. Are you ready to order, sir? Yes. Uh, no, um, um, I left my glasses in my room. Will you excuse me for I can read the menu for you. I wouldn't dream of troubling you. There's no trouble. It's a very short menu. Uh, 
Mrs. Palmer. Oh. Are you, are you all right? Yes, of course. Oh, I, I noticed that you weren't at dinner. No, uh, I signed up for the outing tomorrow, so I thought I'd have an early night. Oh, yes, the outing tomorrow. <laughs> Where are we going again? You signed up for it too? Well, anything to get out of this hotel. St. Michael's Mount. Oh, yes, of course, St. Michael's Mount. <laughs> well, see you tomorrow then. Vaughan Williams? Poulonk. Poulonk? Poulonk. Oh, yes, of course, Poulonk. I've never heard of him. Well, good night, Mr. Carmody. Uh, good night. Tomorrow's outing. Yes, Mr. Carmody? Is there room for one more? This is, uh... Oh, <laughs> Palmer. Oh, yes, of course, Palmer. <laughs> I almost walked straight past you. Um, are you planning to travel with anyone? Only with the rest of the coach. No, I mean, did you plan to sit with anyone? No. Well, may I? <laughs> of course. Have you got any casual clothes to wear, Mr. Carmody? This is a lightweight woolen suit. I mean, it's not casual, perhaps, but it's very comfortable. Haven't you got an anorak or something less formal? Well, this is a perfectly good overcoat. What do you wear when you're relaxing? Do you play golf? No. Do you garden? A little. Well, what do you wear then? My old suits. You don't. Now, what possible advantage would there be in my lying to you? Do you wear your tie as well? An old tie, yeah. While you're gardening? R around my waist instead of my belt. Uh, what else do you do to pass the time? Well, I, I read. I keep abreast of the international situation. In your suit? In my suit, yes. Well, at least you don't have to wear your tie now. A man in a suit without a tie looks like an alcoholic. <laughs> Do you go to bed in your suit? <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Perhaps you wear your tie to keep up your pajamas. I see no purpose in continuing this conversation. As you wish. St. Michael's Mount, where the ancient Greeks traded for gold, copper, and tin with the Celtic tribes of Cornwall and Ireland. For those of you undeterred by steps, we shall be visiting the battlements on top at the conclusion of the tour. So, if you'd like to follow me, please keep close together. I don't want to have to shout. We're visiting the battlements later on, Mr. Carmody, and we all have to stick together. 
Are you hearing this, Mr. Carmody? Yes, yes, thank you. You really don't have to shout, you know. He's quite cured. Well, that's what we thought, Mrs. Palmer. But last night, when he returned to the table, he had a relapse. Did he? Yes, well, look, I, I've been given drops by the local doctor, and they're quite miraculous. Oh, that's wonderful news. Yeah, I'm assured the condition will not recur. Well, quite frankly, I believe you owe this to Miss Dean. Miss Dean? Well, I know she'd be most upset if she knew I was telling you, but she's been praying for you. How very kind. Never underestimate the power of prayer, Mr. Carpenter. No, no, I wouldn't dream of it. According to ancient legend, the mount is dedicated to the Archangel Michael, who appeared before some fishermen in the year 495. It then became the hallowed place of countless Celtic saints. It is also connected with the romantic legend of Tristan and Isolde. The hermit Ogryn was sent here by King Mark to buy for Queen Isolde her wedding gift of finest silk. The present castle is built on the foundations of a Benedictine priory, built by the monks of the Abbey of Mont. You sat on the bus with Mrs. Palmer. Yes. Very beautiful woman. Striking. Don't you agree? I really hadn't noticed. Oh, come now, Mr. Carmody. Don't pretend you haven't got her in your sights. What are you talking about? You and I have the European approach to women. I'm not European, I'm British. We are both hunters. It wouldn't do for us to stalk the same duck, get in each other's way, and then go home empty-handed. How dare you! Say the word, and I will not pursue her. Pursue her, you ridiculous little man! Then you are interested. Interested? I'm... I'm outraged. For why? For one thing, it's no concern of yours whether I'm interested or not. You have my word, Mr. Carmody. I will not trespass. There are other ducks in the pond. That I find equally offensive. Likening Mrs. Palmer to some kind of waterfowl. You misunderstand. I am being poetic. Poetic? You haven't got a poetic bone in your body. What's the matter now? You've a face like thunder. I doubt you want to hear. I wouldn't have asked. That wretched Prager man had the temerity to suggest that he and I were competing for your affections. Are you? Certainly not. And if I've given any impression to the contrary, then I apologize. Do you think Mr. Prager will make a play for me? He undoubtedly intends to. Oh, cool. How could you accept such a thing? Oh, poor Mr. Carmody. You don't have much fun, do you? Fun? Well, life is essentially ridiculous. Once you understand that, you can start to enjoy yourself. Now, come on. Have you got it all in? Well, most of it. What do I press? This red thing? Yeah. <laughs> Shall I take one with you in it? Well, only if you want to break the camera. Mr. Carmody. What? You made a joke. Well, I make jokes all the time. Really? All the time. Well, you must point them out to me. They're obviously far too clever. <laughs> oh. This is the most romantic coastline. King Arthur, Merlin, and my particular favorites, Tristan and Isolde. I thought they were German. Oh, no, no, no. They were both true Celts. She was from Ireland, he was Cornish. Oh. Oh, look. What? Daisies. Yeah. But it's December, Mr. Carmody. Daisies in December. What? Don't you find that strange? Well, I suppose so. But it's so mild, I forgot what month it was. Mr. Carmody, you took your tie off. Hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> no, don't hide it. It makes you look festive. Could we sit down for a bit?
Have you been alone since your wife died? For a while. But then circumstances made me move in with my son and his family. No, that's not what I meant. Uh, I mean, have you met someone else? At my age? What's wrong with your age? Well, if you have to ask that, look what a fool Mr. Prager makes of himself. Setting his sights on you as though you're a duck. I'm flattered. Don't be absurd. That ridiculous little squirt. He's probably wonderful in bed. I really think it's time we went back to join the others. All right. Oh. What's wrong? I, nothing. <laughs> I got up too quickly. It'll pass. Should I get help? Just give me a moment. Oh. <laughs> there. You see? All better. Take my arm. Thank you. little coarse, perhaps, but very informative. Will you be joining us in the lounge, Mrs. Palmer? The locals are giving a recital of Gilbert and Solomon. Oh, I think not. <laughs> the sea air has quite exhausted me. Sounds like they're off already. Save me a chair by the front. I must powder my nose. Coffee in the lounge, Mr. Prager. I cannot imagine anything more pleasure giving. I see the duck season is in full swing. You, you don't fancy Gilbert and Sullivan? Another time, perhaps. You know, I, 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 I rather enjoyed our conversation this afternoon. So did I. Well, I was just wondering if you'd care to continue it, so to speak, over dinner tomorrow evening. Oh, Mr. Carmody, are you asking me out? Well, it's difficult to get a word in edgeways when Mrs. What's the name starts talking? <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm not setting my sights on you or anything. It's just to be nice to have a quiet dinner for a change. You do realize that if neither of us turn up, table four will be a hotbed of gossip and supposition? Bugger table four. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, no, it's all right. Bugger table four. Hello? Uh, uh, is that Derek's cabs? Derek speaking. Who's this? I'm the chap who got lost. Oh, yeah. Well, what's happened now? I'm looking for a restaurant. Don't tell me you've wandered off in the middle of lunch. It's for this evening. I want good food, a decent wine cellar, and not too many stairs. Do you mind French? Well, not if the food's good. A Le Mange, too. Do you want me to make the reservation? You wouldn't be getting a commission, would you? Oh, you've got such a suspicious mind. All right, make the reservation and call for us at seven. What's the name of your hotel again? The Jacinda Castle. Are you reading that off something? No. Oh, you're getting better then. Bye. <laughs> Mr. Carmody, you've gone too far. I haven't, have I? Well, I feel quite dowdy in comparison. You look absolutely radiant. Well, sh sh should I go and change? Oh, no, don't you dare. Oh, I'll get my purse. 
We, we could always leave separately if you're worried about the gossip. I didn't dress up like this to be anonymous. Lardy, bloody da. I don't wear this hat for everyone, you know. I'm sure everyone is very grateful. This is the 89, is it? I mean, I seem to remember it being a little drier than the... That's fine, thank you. Loveliest woman in the room. Thank you, Mr. Carmody. <laughs> I do wish you'd call me Gerald. All right. I'm Catherine. Yes, I know. I sneaked to look at the hotel register. Did you now? Uh, was all that genuine? Well, of course. Only my husband used to make a great production of sniffing the cork, swilling it around, gargling. Oh, I, I didn't mean to imply that you were as phony as he was. Was he? Well, not in every department. Well, I, I don't mean to pry. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> Women found him very attractive. And he invariably found them irresistible. I see. I put up with the excuses and the lies for as long as I could. There were no children, but a marriage is a marriage. Oh, oh God, this is so strange. What? Well, I've never told anybody about this before, and Mr. Carmody, you're the most unlikely confidant. I'm so sorry. Oh, you don't have to apologize. Let's dance. Dance? Well, no, I don't dance. <laughs> Everybody dances. Catherine, I do not dance. I have never danced. Gerald, I'm standing here, and if you don't join me shortly, I'll grab the first waiter that comes around, if only to save face. But I haven't danced in years. Then I was dreadful. I'll be the judge of that. And here. Hmm. The other one here. Hmm. Now, try not to fall over. I'm not as bad as that. Catherine. Why do you enjoy making a fool of me so much? You're not a fool. Besides, who's watching? <laughs> if anyone were. They'd think, lucky man, that a gorgeous woman like me should shuffle around the floor with such a terrible dancer. And why do you make me do it? Because it gives you an excuse to hold me. And suddenly, I want to be held very badly.
You know, with a bit of practice, you could be a very good dancer. I don't think Fred Astaire need worry. <laughs> it was a lovely evening, Gerald. Uh, do you have any outings planned for tomorrow? I thought I'd do a little exploring locally. Well, I'd be only too happy to show you around. You know the district? Like the back of my hand. I've been down to the seafront, the shopping centre, around all the hotels. All right. You can give me a guided tour after lunch. After lunch? All right. Uh, sounds like your phone. Yes, it does. <laughs> Good night, Fred. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Good night, Ginger. Yes? Granddad, it's Stephen. Stephen, how are you? Great news. Mum and Dad have been buried by an avalanche. You can come out with us now. We want you to fly out, Granddad. Shut up, bog rat. What's that? Well, Dad says he can make the arrangements. Well, look, Stephen, it's, it's, it's very good of you. To, but but I, look, let me talk to your father. Hello, Dad. Are you going to join us? Arthur, look, I really am very touched that you should want me, but... I can't possibly leave here at such short notice. What? Are you all right? Have you met anyone interesting? Oh, no, no. They're all deadly dull, but the, the place itself has distinct possibilities. I mean, they organize all sorts of outings, and there's a fairly decent shopping center not too far away. Well, not, nothing very exciting. And I still have my reservations about being forced to mix with people I don't really know. And on the other hand, there's always a chance that you might meet a kindred spirit. Well, not that I have, you understand, but the possibility exists. I mean, that's the important thing. Yeah, and, and the town itself is really quite pretty. It's a decent enough seafront, all the usual attractions. Now, believe me, Arthur, I really appreciate that you and the boys are going to so much trouble, but whatever else I am, I am a stayer. So I'll just grit my teeth and... Weather it out, no matter how grim it gets. Catherine. Yes? You don't know where the TV lounge is, do you? I haven't looked for it. Well, I just happened to notice a brief encounter is on this evening. The film? Yes. Oh, I haven't seen that in years. What time? 9.30. Go over by 11-ish. I'll cry like a drain. Well, so will I, probably. It's been years since I had a night out at the pictures. Me too. As a matter of fact, I think the last time was probably the first time I saw a brief encounter. Mr. Carmody, you've got a date. Good evening, sir. Yeah, never pull that. Easy. Celia Johnson, Trevor Howard, that chance. What a pillar. This is a testing shop for. Uh...
it? Next Thursday, the same time. I couldn't possibly let you live. I ask you, most happily. You'll miss your train. Catherine? Well, you certainly enjoyed that. Oh, did I not offer? Well, not that you'd notice. See you in the morning. Good night. Catherine? I think you left something in my room. Oh, my dear girl. I miss it. I don't know. How are you? Mm, better. What was it? Oh, something I ate. No, 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 you were in agony. Oh, it's gone now. Well, at least you should see the nurse. Hmm? Is that your arm? <laughs> Used to be. <laughs> I should have moved it. After the first hour, I don't think I could have, even if I'd wanted to. Yes, sir. I think I preferred it where it was. Catherine, when you got up from the bench that day on St Michael's Mount, that was the same thing, wasn't it? It was a dizzy spell, I told you. I'd rather you didn't. What happened? Well, I was in a fire. It, it looks much worse than it is. Anyone else involved? No, no. Only me. 
my house, my responsibility, my, my stupidity. I put a pen of water on to boil an egg. I looked out of the window. I hadn't touched the garden for months after Margaret died. But it was spring and the weeds were coming out through the lawn, so down I went and I set to work. Of course, the water in the pan went dry. And set fire to an oven glove, or dishcloth or something. The kitchen caught on fire. By the time they arrived, the whole house was ablaze. I tried to, I tried to get, get it in, I tried to rescue the things. But it was too late, I, I, I could, everything went up in flames, everything. Furniture, books, photograph albums. All the inessentials in my life. The things that meant nothing to me. Until they were gone. Well, your pulse is normal. Nothing out of the ordinary there, either. Stomach cramps, you said. Crippling. Probably something you ate. I'll give you something to settle it. What medications are you taking already? Oh, I... I, I thought perhaps a couple of, um... chlorodexafenerol might do the trick. That's a bit drastic, isn't it? Well, a friend recommended. For stomach cramps? Isn't it appropriate? Where did your friend hear about it? I think he was prescribed it. Ah, well, I don't want to alarm you, but I think your friend has something a bit more serious than stomach cramps. Well, what's it for? It's chemotherapy. Cancer? I'm very sorry, I'm afraid so. Here, swallow these. You must be mistaken. I know what I'm talking about, Mr. Carmody. Get out. What? Just get out and leave me alone. Now, look, Mr. Carmody, I realise this must be very upsetting. Get out! I lost my temper, I'm sorry. I'll make the nurse a full apology. All right, I'll patch it up with her, on one condition. What? I still have no takers for the Friday talk slot. Oh, no, really. Oh, look. Lots of our guests have stocks and shares. I know they'd love to have the benefit of your expertise. It's just for half an hour. All I have to do is answer a few questions. Yes, that's all. Very well. Oh, wonderful. 2.30, Main Lounge Friday. In return, I want to ask a favour of you. You're a man of business, all right. What is it? When my son signed me in here, he must have filled in some sort of form concerning me. You want to see it? No. 
I'm talking about Mrs. Palmer. I'm sorry. Information about other guests is strictly confidential. You must understand that. Yes, of course. Of course, I, I do understand. But these are exceptional circumstances. In what way? She left these in my room last night. She said it was chemotherapy. Yes. It's part of a new treatment for cancer. They're calling it a breakthrough. What is the success rate? I really couldn't say. Why don't you ask Mrs. Palmer? Oh, no, 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 I, 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 I couldn't do that. She, she tried so hard to keep her illness from me. But it, it, it can be successful. I don't want to raise false hopes, Mr. Carmody. Will you see that these pills get back to her? Yes, no problem. I'll, I'll say one of the cleaning staff. Gerald, you're not wearing a suit. Or a tie. Oh. Your carriage is at the door, my lady. What carriage? For the mystery trip. What mystery trip? Well, if I told you that, it wouldn't be a mystery, would it? What are we looking for? You haven't read your guidebook very carefully. <laughs> Somewhere out there in that bay, your hero Tristram fell in love with his order. Now, according to this, he was sent to Ireland by his cousin King Mark to bring his order back here to be the king's bride. But on the voyage back, they fell in love. I know. They drank a love potion by mistake. Oh. Well, don't you find that romantic? Well, I suppose so, but uh, if it was a magic potion, then it was out of their hands. What about lesser mortals like you and me? And how can we be sure that it's love? <laughs> it might be something more explicable, like seeing our dimension. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the sun's almost gone. Well, it is December after all. Mm. Don't let the daisies fool you. You know, I think it wasn't some magic potion that made them fall in love. I think it was the sea voyage. What are those? Isn't Catherine? I've managed to book the last two cabins on a Christmas cruise of the Bahamas. We fly to Florida on the 22nd and sail off on Christmas Eve. You've gone mad. It's the sanest thing I've done in years. Oh, I can't accept this. Well, it's entirely selfish, I assure you. G Gerald. No, no, listen, Catherine. 
Listen, I'm 73 years old. It's over half a century since I last fell in love. Even then, I wasn't absolutely sure because I got nothing to compare it with. You no, no, no. You don't understand. Please, let, let me finish. I don't know much about ecstasy or great passion or, or the stuff of legend. But if being in love means not being able to get you out of my mind and wanting to be with you for every second of every day, then I am in love with you. There's no doubt about it, I'm sorry. You know nothing about me. I know enough. I've spent the most wonderful few days with you. I wanted to go on. You have to give me time to think. Of course. It must have cost you a fortune. If it means spending time alone with you, it's cheaper at any price. Can you get your money back if I can't go? Of course, I'm no fool. They told me that if I called them by 5 o'clock this afternoon, I'd get a full refund. Oh, damn, it's five past. Say lovey. You must understand, the decision isn't entirely up to me. You know, I've been ill recently, and it wouldn't be fair to say anything without checking with my doctor. The Caribbean? Come on, he's bound to say yes. Oh, Gerald, it would be wonderful. <laughs> Christmas in the Bahamas. <laughs> Oh, dear. Excuse me. <laughs> Mr. Carmody, uh, Miss Glaystow passed on your apologies. Oh, that's all right. Uh, no, that's not what I mean. She explained the whole situation, and I'm the one who should apologize. It's, it's, it's not necessary. I should have known as soon as you mentioned Chlorodexter Fenerol. Please, please keep your voice down. Oh, Lord, yes, that's her room opposite, isn't it? Such a lovely woman and such a brave fight. Yes. Thank you. You know. It doesn't make any difference. Difference? Of course it makes a difference. Gerald, I have cancer. But you're on medication and it's working, isn't it? At the moment. But it's like a pendulum. Any day it can swing the other way. But it may not. Look. We must take each day as it comes. Look, it's, a, it's just a cruise, Catherine. You and I know it's more than that. And you wouldn't have suggested it if you hadn't found out. I don't pity you, Catherine. I love you. Listen, Gerald. The treatment seems to be working, yes. But if it doesn't, my specialist has been wonderfully informative about the days I have coming to me. And uh, I wouldn't want to share them with anyone, especially someone as loving and as kind. Catherine. Catherine.
comedy. Yes. Are you fit? I looked for you at breakfast or lunch, but you've been keeping to your room. We're expecting quite a turnout. You're not going to let me down, I hope. I'll be there. Main lounge, ten minutes, all right? Ten minutes. Is the trip down nice? Yes, I think straight over Bob and Moore. Oh, Mr. Carmody, this is my nephew, John. Hello. Mr. Carmody and I have been on a number of outings together. What's happening? Uh, John came to pick me up a day early. Why? I'm afraid my conference was an absolute washout. Frankly, I wasn't willing to waste the time. I thought you were here until the weekend. I'm not... I'm not upsetting anyone's plans, am I? No, of course not. Mr. Carmody understands. You can't. You can't. Gerald, please. Look, I, I don't mean to interfere, but I think my aunt wants to be left alone to pack. Well, why don't we go and have a drink? Why don't you mind your own business? Why don't I? I'll wait in the lobby, shall I? No. No need for that. I could do with your help, actually. Catherine. I know why Mr. Carmody is so upset. Uh, he's giving a talk on stocks and shares to the guests, and uh, he was rather anxious that I should be there. I'm sure we have time to listen to a bit of it. Any minute now, isn't it? So you're an expert on stocks and shares? It was my profession. I'm in securities. Same but different. What's this? Plonk. What? My pull-long tape. To complete your musical education. It's, uh, after 2.30. Well, we'll just finish packing, and then we'll be right down. I'm not sure we'll be able to stay for all of it, but I could certainly do with a few tips. We'll say goodbye now. Have a wonderful Christmas, Gerald. And thank you for everything you've tried to do for me. Well, check the bathroom. Well, see you down there. First question. Yes, Miss Dean. Uh, my mother invested heavily in war bonds. They yield a pittance. Um, should I sell them and invest in something with a more profitable payout? Mr. Carmody? <laughs> yeah, your, your mother didn't buy them for profit, Miss Dean. She bought them to help the country. They're what you call perpetual bonds. They're more an act of faith than an investment. But supposing I wanted to sell them? Well, there's very little market for them, I'm afraid. I mean, they'll keep paying out to your children and your children's children. But I don't have any children. Well, thank you, Miss Dean. And who's next? Mrs Carmichael. I've been advised that my portfolio contains too many blue chip stocks. Consequently, I should add a few high risk ventures. My question is, how high is high risk? Recently, I, I was told I, I shouldn't gamble on a high risk investment. But sometimes, even in business, a man must take a risk because it gives his life purpose again. I mean, others, the, the bright boys may say, forget it, there's no future in it. But there's no use in telling him that because there's no future without it either. 
uh, talking to a man who's found a reason to believe in himself again. Let's follow it through. Despite the risk. Despite the possible heartache. Because that too is part of the bargain. Part of the commitment. And there's every chance it may work. But even if it doesn't, he will be happy to invest whatever he has for as long as it takes. Because he knows the joys are everlasting. Well, that seems to be a very full answer. Wouldn't you agree, Mrs Carmichael? Yes. Well, perhaps I'd better be more specific. You see, my stockbroker went out of business some time ago. But on his recommendation... Excuse me. I... How very rude. 